they have to wash it down with some kind of funky milkshake with like um i don't know kind of like tadpoles in it and things like that so yeah it would be sort of a an exotic mind-blowing eating experience that's what it would be <laughs> so bringing all the boys and the newts to the yard huh <laughs> <laughs> Boys in the nude—that's just scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say wash down a milkshake, so I'm like, you know what? <laughs> you are now listening to the highlight reel builder for authors, the Going North Podcast. I'm your host, best-selling author and Maxwell Leadership Certified Trainer Dom Brightman. And you're going to be getting some tips and techniques to advance yourself coming up next. Today's episode is sponsored by both books, Going North, Tips and Techniques to Advance Yourself, and the follow-up bestseller, Stay the Course, The Elite Performer's Seven Secret Keys to Sustainable Success. Head over to Amazon.com, pick up both books. They are available in a trifecta of paperback, audio, and ebook. Cop all three of both and be on the lookout for another book from yours truly to help podcasters succeed. Now let's get on with today's episode. And today on the Highlight Reel Builder for Authors, known as GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous, we got another super special, awesome guest for you today, my friends. That's right, indeed, courtesy of my good buddy, Mr. Mickey Mickelson, all the way from Texas, indeed. That's right, indeed. Used to be from Canada, a.k.a. Canada, for those who like to speak proper English, but the barbecue kidnapped another Canadian again, baby. That's right, indeed. We all know barbecue beats maple syrup all the time indeed because he hooked me up with another wonderful guest all the way from the uk baby that's right he's all the way from the uk and my man's got a lot of wonderful novelettes and a couple novels and is working on quite a few more and when he's not writing you might find him up a mountain snorkeling on a coral reef or with his partner and or even having adventures with his grandson so let's give it up for the k a b himself keith anthony baird how you doing today keith <laughs> Hi man, oh, this is just so wonderful to chat to you, Dom. You you just seem like a, a bloody ray of light, man. You're so fresh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! I love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me and Abe. What do you want to know about KAB? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, the special K himself, the champ, man. So how's it feel, man? Like, you got a bunch of wonderful novels under your belt. Got another one that you're hoping a publisher will snag and shoot your big fat check so retirement can come faster for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I can see that uh, super yacht in the Maldives. It's it's beckoning as we speak. Um, no, I mean, I started out. Um, I came late to the game, to be honest. I was 45 when I started doing this, and I've just turned 53. So I'm sort of, you know, steaming headlong into old fart territory as we speak. But for about the first five years, yeah, first five, I was totally self-published. That was kind of a decision I made because I'd come from a, um, a journalistic background where I'd done a lot of editing work for many years. So I kind of thought, well, I've got the chops to do this, so I may as well sort of do my own thing with it. I was also a graphic designer for a lot of years, so I thought, well, I can do the covers as well. I don't know. It was probably with hindsight. (laughs) It was probably like a big mountain to climb, to be honest. And I, I jumped in at the deep end, Dom, like... I, I kind of done it ass backwards, um, like a lot of <laughs> a lot of writers do, uh, new writers, because they don't really sort of know what they're getting into. And I dove straight in with like a huge novel, which ended up being, oh God, 105,000 words. So I didn't start off with like little pieces of the pie. I just kind of went in <laughs> for the whole thing. And... I think with hindsight, I think I would do everything the other way around now. I would start off with small things, uh, then go into slightly bigger things, and then go into bigger, bigger things. 
and I'll probably I'd probably get involved with the publisher early on because I only decided to do that um, in 2021 and I sent what has just been published um, which is a, a dark fantasy adult fairy tale um, which is kind of like Game of Thrones um, House of the Dragon or, or a bit like The Witcher are you familiar with The Witcher on Netflix <laughs> I, I don't know, I, was thinking, I think that was a video game before Netflix picked it up yes right? it was yes yes I mean it's, it comes from a series of books first off so yeah it's um it's kind of like that is the theme so it's very dark um there's a lot of sort of blood in it and a lot of betrayal a lot of sort of deceit which is kind of like you know reflective of game of thrones house of the dragon that kind of thing and that's with an american publisher in kansas called bridget's gate press and that came out in november uh, on the 22nd and that's you know kind of like my main talking point at the moment is to try and plug that really sort of past efforts of mine well i've done two novels a novelette a couple of novellas uh book of shorts um and then put those out on audible as well um they've got three titles on audible but i mean my focus now to be honest is to get as many publishing contracts as i can obviously i've been assigned the publicist with mickey via bridget skate press so it's really sort of aiming to sort of build from this novella, which I've just brought out and just kind of, hopefully I can get some more um, publishing contracts and sort of grow my profile. So that's kind of where I'm at at this point. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. And Dean, congrats, man, building up the profile like that too. And really tapping into that good old thinking grow rich chapter of men getting in their <laughs> forges and realizing, you know what? Midlife crisis, time to get freaking serious, time to rediscover my dream of being an author. I had a 19. It's like, yeah, baby, I'm here after all this time. <laughs> well, it was either that or, or just get a really huge Harley Davidson or something and just, you know, kind of disappear off over the horizon and just kind of like have that huge midlife crisis. But <laughs> I, decided, I decided to focus all that energy into writing instead. <laughs> it's a little bit more sedated. Yeah. It's not quite an outlaw, you know, um, <laughs> um, just a little bit more respectable than that, sadly. <laughs> but hey, at least it makes you some coin, at least. That's the good news about it. Well, yes, um, you know, hopefully things will kind of, you know, sort of take off. I mean, I know there's kind of um, Mickey certainly on the case and so are my publisher. They're, they're really pulling out the stops, you know, in terms of, of sort of marketing it and driving it forward. I mean, there's sort of big advertising going on in sort of international magazines. Uh, so there's there's that kind of side of things. And then. I recently had a, an interview with Al Warren on NBC, which was quite a big thing for me. And then obviously as many podcasts as I can sort of get on and sort of spread the word about. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's really sort of a, a real big push. And I mean, uh, Bridget's Gate Press, you know, they're quite a young publisher. But I would say, I mean, probably only two years up and running now, but they're really, really forging ahead and you know they're kind of striking up deals with Barnes and Noble and uh, various other outlets so they're actually not just you know a lot of the sort of small press publishers are kind of online but they're really making inroads into sort of you know physical stores um, I know that there's um, product out in the Midwest um, up in Canada um, and even in the Middle East, believe it or not, which was um, you know a bit of a strange one. I thought, but it was Dubai. So I think there's a lot of um, American contractors over there. So they're sort of picking up things from libraries and, and what have you. So so yeah, there's there's a real big push, which I'm really pleased about, um, and they're really really determined. So hopefully I will get that yacht. Hopefully you'll never yeah, hear yeah. from me again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just disappear and that'll be it <laughs> live a life of luxury <laughs> there you go folks will be like man we knew we should never wrote them horror novels now they turned them into one what happened to them <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean I think I'm, what I'm trying for next is I mean obviously you've got the publisher you've got the publicist 
I really could do with having an agent. So like in 23, I'm going to try and pull out all the stops and approach as many agents. I mean, I did sort of start that process last year, but it's, it's quite hard slow getting an agent. You know, it's, it's, if you create a sort of buzz on the scene, you know, they kind of sit up and pay attention then because they're kind of like, oh, yeah, this guy's shifting units and, you know, I, I want a bit of that action. So, so yeah, so I, I really need to get an agent because what I would love more than anything else is to get to sell some screen rights for something and get something developed, you know, like on a streaming platform or something like that, like Netflix or something, you know, or HBO and just get something sort of fully realized um, because I, I just think that that would be it probably be the thing which kind of like blows you up, takes you out of the trenches, the right in trenches and gets you sort of on the radar of, of the wider public, you know? So that's kind of like really where I'm driving for this year is to get, is to get an agent on board and, you know, see if I can get somebody who can really sort of push me in that area. Yeah. So keep your fingers crossed and your toes crossed when we're done. Everything, you know, throw holy water on me and things like that. And hopefully it'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be like, hey, so that was the whole coral reef. It's like, no, it's just holy water. That's all yeah, it is. I'll, I'll just swim in holy water. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, you can <laughs> milk. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, or maybe I can climb one of those mountains and sort of ask God to do me a favor. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. We'll just keep <laughs> everything crossed for 23. That's the aim. There we go. It's a good aim indeed. A good aim indeed. So my <laughs> goodness, man. So since you've been on a few podcasts already, is there a question that you wish hosts would ask you more often when you're being interviewed? Um, well, a lot of them tend to ask me about the kind of, you know, where do you get your inspiration from and things like that. And, you know, it's kind of, sometimes I think writers can sort of say, well, you know, I'm inspired by this author or I'm inspired by that author. And I mean, you know, I can't deny that I am, but I tend to not let that kind of influence what I do. I, I, I try to kind of, if I'm going to draw inspiration from things, I, t I try to draw them from just kind of like, the world around me so say if i want to write i don't know something that's set in the dark forest or whatever i'll go for i'll go for walks in the forest and and just kind of like try and soak up that atmosphere so rather than you know try and emulate somebody else's craft you know i think it's great to sort of say you know so and so did this and x did that and y did that and it's fantastic but um i think you know it's kind of like the wrong wrong thing is to sort of you know, try and emulate those people. I, I think because everybody's got their own voice and I think that's the most important thing. So as long as you kind of like put your voice across, I think you can't really go wrong if if, if that's what you're doing. And, and you know, and, and even if, you know, that doesn't reach as wide an audience as, um, you know, other people, then at least you're being true to what you do. Because I, I think I think it'd be quite easy to kind of sell your soul in order to to chase something. Like if you if you know, obviously the ultimate idea is to say to yourself, well, you know, I want to ditch my day job and I just want to be a writer and I want to earn a living from being a writer. But um, you know, that's quite a challenge in itself. But like, I think I'd rather do it and do it with my work and my voice than kind of sell, sell myself down the river and, and, and just kind of write a little bit more mainstream, if you know what I mean, rather than being so niche. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I think I'd kind of like lose, I, I would lose what I did and I wouldn't feel really comfortable with that, to be honest. Um, you know, I suppose there's some people that can say, well, screw that i want the money <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> and believe, believe me i do but i don't want to sell my soul in the process you know so uh, it needs to be it needs to be what i write and you know and and even like you know as i previously said if something was developed for for tv or for for cinema i i don't know how i'd sort of 
fit in in with that i don't know how it's you know because obviously it would be people from out outside of the equation would get involved and like directors and you know screenwriters and they probably put a different spin on it you know and yeah that would get me a lot of um you know publicity but would i be happy with the end product as well you know because it would be so changed probably so uh, do you know what it is dom i'm just an awkward i'm not even gonna say the word um i'm just you know i i kind of want things my way but then i i kind of realize that they probably won't ultimately be that way if you want to sort of take that bigger step to success i think there's probably going to be some element of compromise is really going to be needed there and, and and maybe that's why i started off writing and i did it all myself because <laughs> because i might struggle <laughs> someone might have to get me in a headlock or something some kind of wrestling move or something like that and just kind of like slam me down and say well it's gonna to have to be done this way man. so yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it'd have to get pretty violent pretty brutal and sort of beat me down and then and then i might accept the whole sort of mainstream step but i wouldn't do it willingly let's put it that way <laughs> i'd be in the ring with mr t like rocky that's what i'd be like <laughs> uh, but hey that's good though hey but that's good though well, definitely good true to yourself yeah exactly just staying true to yourself indeed man definitely indeed so my goodness a fun question for you so if your wonderful book <laughs> especially since it's for the grown-ups indeed in the grim dark strands of the spinneret if that book were a food what would it be and why <laughs> oh, that's crazy um <laughs> <laughs> if it was a food jesus it would probably be I think it would probably be quite an exotic pizza. I think there'd be all kinds of stuff in there. There'd be kind of like your usual stuff, you know, obviously, so maybe like four cheeses, um, some onion in there. Obviously, you know, you've got your tomato whole thing and then you'd have some herbs. But I think it probably would be like, you know, have you seen those kind of reality shows where there's kind of like a jungle challenge? And someone oh, has yeah. to yeah, eat like a kangaroo eyeball or something like that, or I don't know, like a crab's sort of brain or something like that. They would have to, it would have to have an element of that kind of thing on because the whole thing is kind of about hybridized monsters with humans and sort of necromancy and magic. Um, so yeah, it would be a pizza that had kind of like maybe kind of like scorpions on maybe the odd sort of camel spider or something like that um and maybe a, a blood orange yeah <laughs> oh god and then maybe some barbed wire or something like that just to add a bit of time to it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it, it would be an interesting pizza for, for definite and it would be for about 16 people it would be rather large i would say yeah so you'd have to wash it down with some kind of funky milkshake with like um i don't know kind of like tadpoles in it and things like that so yeah it would be sort of a an exotic mind-blowing eating experience that's what it would be <laughs> So bringing all the boys and the newts to the yard, huh? <laughs> <laughs> boys and the newts, that's just scary. <laughs> well, you say wash down a milkshake, so I'm like, you know what? <laughs> oh, that just you just nailed that. That is just so <laughs> Oh shit! Uh, you couldn't get that. You couldn't get that from Domino's. That's for certain. <laughs> Uh, but hey, all 16 sweet of them will fall down like Domino's, right? Am I right? <laughs> yeah, I think that I'd ra rather dicky tummies after that. Oh, that shut over now. Uh, uh, <laughs> I've never thought of that before, Dom, as as my works as food. And that's that's quite an interesting concept. I, I, need, to, I need to do something with that. I need to take that away and do something. I might actually write something which is kind of like, oh, actually, that reminds me I did write a short story which was kind of a food related horror thing 
So yeah, I could I could maybe revisit that kind of idea. That's pretty cool. I like that. I did have a recent idea about Christmas, um, and it was about kind of leaving presents on people's doorsteps at Christmas, but it was just like disassembled people. So like someone oh, would get a gift, yeah, and they, they'd open it up, and it'd be someone's head. You know, it'd be like Elsie from down the road. You know, she's like ninety four years old or something like that, but. You know, the next time you see it, she's kind of like disassembled like a jigsaw puzzle. So, yeah, things like that would be pretty cool horror stories, like, you know, horror at Christmas. Um, you know, did you did you get a giant jigsaw puzzle for Christmas kind of question? You know, that kind of thing. I bet that struck you as really normal, did it? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> see, that's another thing that podcasters ask as well. They say, like, you know, if you're a horror writer and you think about all these kind of things, um, then there must be something psychotic about you. Well, the truth of it is, is no, we're all very sort of normal, unfortunately, and probably rather boring. Like, when we're sort of making something to eat in the kitchen, I'm not I'm not thinking about sort of chopping people's fingers off or, or putting, you know, their head in a blender or something like that. It's just, you know, it's 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 almost like how can I describe it? So if there was like a piece of theatre or a, um or a, say like if you go and see a band and they put on this kind of like performance piece. You know, a good example of that would be like Alice Cooper back in the day, like in the 70s, and he would have like people being chopped up on stage and all this kind of stuff. It's just a performance. So that's really all like when you're writing these things, you're just kind of thinking, this is just a piece of theatre. So like, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not that warped conductor. <laughs> <laughs> in the, <laughs> who's, in the whole thing together it's it's just it's just it's just kind of like letting your imagination sort of run wild and that's all it is really it's not you know we, we're not like horror writers on dangerous people that need to be monitored or you know locked up or anything like that it's just um it's just fun really in a dark way it's sort of dark humor isn't it you know <laughs> that's it and that's fun, and I like it. <laughs> and I'm going to keep doing it. Oh, that's another thing I decided the, um, recently, that I'm going to die when I'm 96. So I chose um, an age where I thought, well, it gives me about another 40 years to kind of write all this weird shit. Um, so, yeah, I've picked out an age of when I'm going to die. So that's it. I think, I think that's a good thing for people to do. It gives you something to aim for, doesn't it? You know, if you say it yourself right, you know that's that's a good age. It's nearly a century. I think I'll be bo- I think I'll be bored of everything by then. Yeah, I'll, I'll, have done, I'll have done everything by then. You know, I'll have had my yacht by the time I'm say sixty five. I'll have my yacht. So um, you know that'll give me like another thirty one years of just kind of like lounging around and snorkeling and writing some more nonsense. So yeah. That's there you go. That's it. I decided. So <laughs> I think that's what people should do. They should decide, decide what age they're going to die and what they're going to check out and just aim for it. So there you go. All decided. So don't want to go for the one oh oh the big one hundred. Well, I, if I did that, then I would get a telegram from the king, um, and I just. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do with that, to be honest with you. Uh, just that would be that would feel really weird having like a letter from the royal family. It would just be, I don't know. I mean, there's another thing as well, right? Okay, how does he know where you live? <laughs> how does the king know where you live? How does King Charles know where I live? Like, <laughs> he's not privy to that kind of thing, surely. Surely, he doesn't know where e- all of his subjects in the land live. I mean, that just seems, you know. Although, having said that, we do have MI6, don't we? So maybe he's plugged into all that cable. So, you know, or, or maybe he's got like an Apple iPhone or something so he can sort of track you and know where you are, you know, send you a telegram. I mean, why doesn't he just send people an email, you know, 
or just or send you a DM on Twitter or something. Why why has it got to be like a piece of paper that comes through the post? I just I don't understand it really, to be honest. I think it's very antiquated. It's it's out of date now. So no, it's gonna be ninety-six, so I can avoid that. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> okay. It's <laughs> Avoid paper yeah. from the king. It's tracking us. <laughs> well, he's got to be, hasn't he? How does he know where everybody is? What's all that about? And, unless he's got some kind of like crystal ball or something like that, or you know, maybe he's a wizard or something. I don't know. He's weird. <laughs> Whatever he is, I don't know that much. We shouldn't have kings and queens anyway. I don't know what that's all about. You know, it's like we're living in the Middle Ages or something. You know, we should republic, republic. That's what we need. Yeah, a banana republic. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's bananas. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I think I think my lack of sleep is driving me bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Going around the bend, I think. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, <Christ. laughs> Well, I guess on that note, then coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive, and that is if you're going to wake up tomorrow and you were 25 again, but you're still in 2023, what advice would you give to yourself? My God, I think I would probably say get yourself a really good profession and stay in it don't wander from one thing to the next because that's what i did i was kind of like a like a ping pong ball it's kind of like well i'll do this and then i sort of drifted out of that went to something else so my life was kind of like a pinball machine it was just like um, pinging from one thing to the next and kind of thinking that you really know what you're doing and you've got a plan (laughs) but you're just fooling yourself (laughs) <laughs> completely um so yeah I, w- I would say you know find something that you like to do and get really good at it and then stick at it because say if i started writing when i was 25 instead of 45 then i'd be on that yacht right now wouldn't i you know so instead of sitting here at 53 dreaming about it it would have it would have happened by now so that would be my advice would be sort of keep your focus on something and don't drift. I've kind of lived my life like the littlest hobo. I don't know if you're, um, you're aware of that. It was a dog, like a German shepherd dog. And it was a, an American program. And this dog just wandered all over America. But it did good things when it when it did. It, it, it helped people out. Um, so my life's been like that dog, I think. So if I had any advice for myself, I'd say don't be like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're going to be a dog, have a kennel at least so you're not wandering around everywhere. Yeah, that maybe that. That's it. Is that the strangest <laughs> answer you've ever had to that question, Dom? <laughs> uh, I guess... Uh... <laughs> the dog with the kettle part i mean yeah that that made it weird for the most part everything else before that was pretty much normal <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, why, do you talk, why do you talk to authors man god we're just <laughs> we're just a weird bunch we really are just absolutely insane <laughs> I mean, hey, getting folks to talk about barbed wire pizza. Hey, what the heck? Why not, right? <laughs> you know, it's but yeah, that would that would really sum up my novel because it's it's bloody. You see, there's a lot of bloodshed in it, and uh, you know that would happen if you ate a pizza with razor wire or something. So, so yeah, but I I, I love that question actually. When you asked me about what food would my books be, that's that's. Just it's it's put my mind in an entirely different sort of place. I'm in a totally different headspace now. So I'm gonna start thinking like what animal would my books be? You know, but like would it be a giraffe or or, or would it be like an anteater or something like that? Um 
what else would it be would it would it be a planet you know would it would it be would it be like a big red bus <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. You know, it's just you've just opened this pot now. You've opened this like, kind of like Pandora's box of ideas now. It's just like, oh yes, I'm loving this. This is great. <laughs> you've given me something to explore, Dom. You really have. <laughs> Sweet. The rabbit hole succeeds again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send the insane person down the rabbit hole. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> that's right indeed and there's no pills in either hole either <laughs> they've ruined the conversation they watched the matrix too many times <laughs> yeah see that's the thing i would have taken both pills I, <laughs> i'd have taken the red one and the blue one just to see what happened see they cancel each other <laughs> see they kind of rip me apart see the you know you know it would have been awesome i think to take both because that it totally would have pants up the movie completely wouldn't it because like you know that was it they would have said hang on a minute that's not in the script <laughs> <laughs> how to derail a movie <laughs> <laughs> uh, that sounds like a podcast idea if it's not out there already <laughs> <laughs> yeah we need a paint in that there we go <laughs> <laughs> But I know if folks want to stay on the rails and keep up with your content and all your future books. So for those need to do just that and follow all the Keith goodness, what's the best way for folks to do so? I would say Twitter, to be honest with you. Do you know what it is? I tried Instagram recently and I get it. I understand what it's trying to do. It's very basic, but it just won't let me follow anyone. And I don't know why. So I was, I was shouting at it the other day. Um, it wasn't listening. <laughs> so I send various messages off to um, Instagram support and they're not listening either because <laughs> nobody has replied to me so yes Twitter would be the best way I mean I'm currently building a website but it's, it doesn't have a domain name at the moment it's kind of like um, under construction and parked there um, but you've given me a few ideas Dom like I said so the, the website's going to change it's going to be like a menu now um, and it's going to be like um like a zoo a menu and a zoo combined feeding <laughs> <laughs> time at the zoo <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah so yeah okay in all seriousness <clears throat> twitter yes that would be the best place to to grab me um because it's it's so much easier i mean you can just kind of throw links out there to your products um, so easily you can rustle up a video, chuck some graphics together that just kind of resemble a big mess. And then, you know, people can sort of click onto those things and it just takes you elsewhere, like to your products, to Amazon and stuff. So, yeah, I find social media is probably like the easiest thing, to be honest with you. So there you go. Uh, it's K-A-B author, obviously with an at sign in the front of it as well. So there you go. That's that's how people will find me if they wish so. I've probably scared them all off now. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we want Let to buy a big weird? <laughs> hey, if you scared them off after they exchange a dollar or two, or should I say yeah. a few hundred dollars for your books, they'll say, okay, you did your job. <laughs> you scared them before they open the page. It's beautiful. <laughs> Oh, shit. Now there's a new concept as well. Yeah, authors <laughs> scaring people into buying their shit. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Dom, you're just full of like just amazing ideas. This is great. Let's just keep it rolling. This is this is how I'm going to make. <laughs> this is it. It'll just be your, <laughs> you've come up with a formula. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's right indeed. Horror author scares people into buying his books. It's like wait. <laughs> Why didn't we think of this freaking decades ago? <laughs> <laughs> indeed, man. Indeed. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, any parting words before we close up shop, my man? <laughs> yes, this has been the uh, most um, technical interview I have done <laughs> so far, and I've really enjoyed it. It's just been laid back, cool, and... Um, 
and yeah, and I'd like to say to people, I, I've 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 written some books, and um, if you'd like to go and find them out there in the world, and maybe read one or two, even if you just read a page, uh, or, or or three words, that that would be good, and then. You know, you can decide whether you want to read the rest of it, or you can sort of say, "God, this is um, this isn't very good, is it?" <laughs> um, <laughs> but I don't think that'll happen because I think people will say, ah, "Actually, this guy can write." So yeah, so it, you know, if people want to go and check me out on Twitter, um, I will talk to anybody. Uh, if anybody wants to talk to me after this, <laughs> which I doubt. So that's that's all I want to say. And and thank you very much, Dom, for giving me this opportunity to ramble in the wee small hours like a madman. Thank you very much. Thanks a bunch for investing your time by listening to this wonderful podcast today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you really did, do me a solid and leave a review or share this episode with at least three people that you think would get some value out of today's content. Advance others to advance yourself.